If you took the digital SAT this past March, or you heard about how the math module was an entire nightmare, I'm here to give you five reasons why you shouldn't worry about this test. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I got a 1570 on the SAT. Follow my channel for more tips, as well as to get a top score on the SAT. Now, before I get started, leave your comment down below about how you did on the test or why you thought the test was so difficult. Now, for many students, this test was extremely difficult from the other digital practice tests, with specifically the math module 2 having extremely difficult questions and leaving many students to be stumped. But you shouldn't worry, and here are five reasons why. Number one, adaptive scoring. Unlike the paper SAT test, which has static questions, or the questions don't get any harder or easier depending on how you did in the previous questions, the digital SAT test will get harder the better you do and the more you progress through the test. That is why for many people, module one for math was extremely easy compared to module two, which was completely the opposite. But you shouldn't be worried because this is actually a good thing because you were actually doing well so far in that test as the only way to get a top score in that test was to continue to get more and more challenging problems. So just because you got challenging problems doesn't mean you did bad. In fact, if you got easier problems, that might actually mean that you did bad in the first module. Number two, experimental questions. What they do is that in every module, they'll have two experimental questions. What this means is that these are two more extremely difficult questions which they'll put in not to have any weight or value on your actual score, but rather to see if these questions are usable for future tests. So if you took in the module two, for example, saw some extremely difficult questions that you were unable to solve, there's a chance that these were questions that were experimental. And so even if you got them wrong or right, they wouldn't have any impact on your actual score. Number three, bell curve. Because we've been hearing so many reports of students having struggles or difficulties with the math module two on the digital SAT, this can be an indicator of the test in general being extremely difficult and there being a higher curve. Now, a high curve means even when you get a few questions wrong, you can still get a top score on the digital SAT. So for example, if you were to get three questions wrong, you could still get close to an 800 on the actual score because the test makers want you to have a higher score to balance out the bell curve. Number four, more free response. The digital SAT had more free response questions. Now this is important because free response questions can often be more complex and more confusing to students simply because unlike a multiple choice question, which has all the four possible answers available to you, the free response question means that you have to do all the process by yourself. So for example, you have to go through the problem, create your process, do all the thinking, and ultimately when you reach your answer, you cannot check it with the actual answers on the paper. This can lead many students to be more doubtful on their answers, even when they may have gone it right, simply because of the complex processes that can lead people to feel doubt. Number five, reversion to the mean. Now, because this test was so difficult compared to the paper tests or even the practice tests, College Board will likely add changes to the next test. This is because College Board, just like having a good curve on a single test, wants to have a good curve on the entire tests. That's why it will make the next and next tests either slightly different, slightly easier, or slightly difficult depending on how the previous tests went. And so because this test was so difficult, there is a likelihood that they could have easier tests in the future. And so at the end of the day, because what you should remember is that this is just one test and specifically, it's the first iteration of College Board's digital SAT. This means that there will constantly be new changes. So the best thing that you can do, simply go into the next test and sign up and stay calm so that you will crush it the next time. 